He is known for being an American naturalist and a prominent malacologist. He is recognized for his contributions to various fields of science including ornithology, zoology, and paleontology. His name is William Healy Dahl. Boston, Massachusetts was a bustling city with a rich intellectual and cultural landscape. It was in this vibrant setting that a young William, born into a family of educators and philosophers, began to cultivate his passion for the natural world. His father, Charles, a Unitarian minister, was often away on missionary work in India, but his absence did not dampen William's curiosity and hunger for knowledge. During one of his father's brief visits home in 1862, young William was introduced to a group of naturalists at Harvard University. The encounter proved to be a pivotal moment in his life as he was captivated by their discussions and the wonders of the natural sciences. It was as if a new world had opened up before his eyes, and he eagerly immersed himself in the study of nature. By the time William graduated from high school in 1863, his interest in mollusks had grown exponentially. It was during this formative period that he caught the attention of Louis Agassiz, a renowned scientist at Harvard's Museum of Comparative Zoology. Agassiz recognized William's potential and took him under his wing, becoming his mentor and guide in the field of natural science. Under Agassiz's tutelage, William delved deeper into the world of malacology, the study of mollusks. In this emerging field, he discovered a wealth of knowledge waiting to be unraveled. The intricacies of these soft-bodied creatures fascinated him, and he dedicated himself to understanding their anatomy, behavior, and distribution. In addition to his studies in malacology, William also pursued a comprehensive education in anatomy and medicine under the renowned Professor Jeffries Wyman. This multidisciplinary approach broadened his understanding of the natural world and equipped him with the necessary tools to conduct rigorous scientific research. Despite the challenges and obstacles that lay ahead, William's early experiences in Boston laid a firm foundation for his future endeavors. His innate curiosity, coupled with the guidance of esteemed mentors, fueled his passion for exploration and discovery. Little did he know that these humble beginnings would pave the way for a remarkable career that would take him to the farthest corners of the earth. William Healy Dahl, a passionate naturalist and expert in invertebrates and fish, found himself in Chicago where he crossed paths with the renowned naturalist Robert Kennicott at the Chicago Academy of Sciences Museum. This encounter would change the course of Dahl's life and set him on a path of exploration and discovery. In 1865, the Western Union Telegraph Expedition was organized to find a potential route for a telegraph line connecting North America and Russia via the Bering Sea. Kennicott, chosen as the expedition's scientist, enlisted Dahl as his assistant due to his knowledge of invertebrates and fish, which would be essential for the expedition's research. Together, they embarked on the Clipper Nightingale, commanded by naturalist Charles Melville Scammon, to explore the Siberian coast with several stops in Alaska. One of these stops was Scammon Bay, Alaska, named after the commanding naturalist himself. Dahl, eager to continue his scientific pursuits, joined Kennicott in venturing further into Siberia in 1866. However, tragedy struck when Dahl received news at St. Michael, Alaska, that Kennicott had passed away from a heart attack while prospecting a possible telegraph route along the Yukon River. Determined to complete Kennicott's work, Dahl decided to stay on the Yukon during the winter. Facing the cancellation of his own expedition, Dahl took on the task of finishing Kennicott's Yukon River work at his own expense. This was during a time when Alaska was acquired by the United States from Russia, making it an uncharted land full of unexplored fauna, flora, and resources. Inspired by the opportunity to survey and study this vast wilderness, Dahl took on the role of a surveyor scientist. After spending several years in Alaska, meticulously cataloging the thousands of specimens he had collected, Dahl published his account of his pioneering travels in Alaska and its resources in 1870. This work shed light on the Yukon River, Alaska's geography and resources, and its inhabitants. His dedication and expertise led to his appointment as acting assistant to the United States Coast Survey in the same year. Between 1871 and 1874, Dahl embarked on numerous reconnaissance and survey missions to Alaska, as part of his official duties. While his main task was to survey the Alaska coast, he also took advantage of the opportunity to gather specimens. He meticulously collected mollusks, echinoderms, fossils, and more during his survey of the Aleutian Islands in 1871 to 1872. In 1874, aboard the U.S. Coast Survey schooner Yukon, he marveled at the majesty of Latuya Bay, comparing it to California's Yosemite Valley if it still retained its glaciers. Eager to share his discoveries with the scientific community, Dahl sent his collections to prominent institutions and scholars. His mollusk collection was sent to Louis Agassiz at Harvard's Museum of Comparative Zoology, while plant specimens went to Asa Gray, also at Harvard. Archaeological and ethnological materials found their home at the Smithsonian. 
In 1877 to 1878, Dahl became associated with the Blake expeditions along the east coast of the United States. These expeditions resulted in major publications in the Bulletin of the Museum of Comparative Zoology at Harvard, further establishing Dahl's scientific contributions. In August 1878, Dahl had the opportunity to visit Europe, attending a meeting in Dublin held by the British Association for the Advancement of Science. During this trip, he seized the chance to explore mollusk collections and connect with European scholars, expanding his network of scientific collaboration. After marrying Annette Whitney in 1880, William Healy Dahl embarked on a series of expeditions and surveys as part of his work as a scientist and paleontologist. Their honeymoon took them to Alaska, where they arrived in Sitka. However, after a short time, his wife had to return home to Washington, D.C., leaving Dahl to continue his work alone. In 1882, Dahl took a brief break from his scientific endeavors to contribute to the Republican Congressional Campaign Committee. However, he soon returned to his true passion, dedicating himself to the field of geology and paleontology. By 1884, Dahl decided to leave his position at the U.S. Coast and Geodetic Survey. Despite already having written over 400 scientific papers, he yearned for new opportunities and challenges. He subsequently joined the newly established U.S. Geological Survey as a paleontologist. This transition led to his appointment as Honorary Curator of Invertebrate Paleontology at the U.S. National Museum, where he focused his research on both modern and fossil mollusks. This position would remain his until the end of his life. As part of his work with the U.S. Geological Survey, Dahl embarked on various trips to study geology and fossils in different regions. He explored the Northwest, Florida, and Georgia, studying the unique geological formations and collecting valuable data. In 1899, Dahl had the opportunity to participate in a groundbreaking scientific expedition known as the Harriman Alaska Expedition. Alongside renowned scientists such as glaciology expert John Muir, Dahl embarked on the SS George W. Elder to explore the glacial fjords of the Alaska coast, the Aleutian Islands, and the Bering Strait. During this expedition, numerous new genera and species were discovered and documented. Dahl's expertise in Alaska's biology and the cultures of its native peoples was unparalleled, leaving his fellow scientists in awe of his knowledge. His contributions to the reports of the Harriman Alaska Expedition included authoring a chapter on the description and exploration of Alaska, as well as Volume 13, focused on land and freshwater mollusks. In addition to his work in Alaska, Dahl spent two months in Hawaii at the Bishop Museum. During his time there, he carefully examined the museum's extensive shell collection, adding to his vast knowledge of mollusks. Throughout his career, William Healy Dahl demonstrated a relentless passion for scientific exploration and discovery. His contributions to the fields of geology, paleontology, and biology left a lasting impact on the scientific community, solidifying his legacy as one of America's foremost naturalists. In the late 19th century, William Healy Dahl's contributions to the scientific community were widely recognized and celebrated. He had dedicated his life to the pursuit of knowledge and had made significant contributions to various fields. As a result, he received numerous accolades, societies, and honors. During this period, Dahl's exceptional work and expertise led to his election as a member of several prestigious U.S. scientific societies. He was not only respected for his knowledge but also for his leadership skills, being appointed as the Vice President of the American Academy of Arts and Sciences. His involvement in these societies allowed him to connect and collaborate with other esteemed scientists and intellectuals of his time. One of his notable achievements during this period was his role as a founder of the National Geographic Society. Recognizing the importance of exploration and geographic discovery, Dahl played a crucial role in establishing an institution that would promote and support such endeavors. His dedication to advancing the understanding of the world around us was evident in his active participation in this society. In 1897, Dahl's exceptional contributions were further acknowledged when he was elected to the National Academy of Sciences. This prestigious honor solidified his place among the scientific elite of the time, and he joined the ranks of esteemed individuals who had made groundbreaking discoveries and advancements in their respective fields. Dahl's eminence and reputation extended beyond the borders of the United States. He was recognized as a foreign member of the Geological Society of London, a society renowned for its contributions to the understanding of geology and earth sciences. This recognition not only served as a testament to his expertise but also allowed him to connect and collaborate with scientific minds from around the world. Moreover, Dahl's eminence earned him several honorary degrees, highlighting the esteem in which he was held by academic institutions. His commitment to knowledge and his invaluable contributions to various scientific disciplines were acknowledged by prestigious universities through these honorary degrees. 
In 1902, Dahl received a unique posthumous honor when Mount Dahl, an 8,399-foot peak in the Alaska Range, was named after him. This recognition by A. H. Brooks of the U.S. Geological Survey further immortalized Dahl's legacy and his significant contributions to the world of science. Despite the numerous accolades, societies, and honors bestowed upon him, William Healy Dahl remained dedicated to his pursuit of knowledge and the advancement of scientific understanding. His experiences during this period reflected his unwavering commitment to his field and the recognition of his tremendous contributions by his peers and the scientific community at large. If you want to discover more adventurers on YouTube, make sure to hit that subscribe button for my channel, and don't forget to leave a comment in the section below, telling us which adventurers you'd like us to feature next.